morning. Welcome to church. I have a scripture to encourage you guys this morning. It says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church and every generation through Jesus Christ. And all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Amen. I was thinking this morning about that scripture and I was thinking about how exciting it is that we are a part of one of those churches in one of the generations that that scripture is talking about. That we get to stand here and we get to praise God in advance for those wildest imagine, or imagination dreams coming true. Has anybody in here, has God ever done something that is beyond your wildest imagination? Yes. Anybody? And is anybody in here hoping for something that is beyond your wildest imagination? Yes. So we get to stand together as one of those churches in one of those generations and praise God for the generations before us. We we bind together with them and we pioneer forward in praise for every single generation that comes after us. So we're going to go back into that one more time. I just want you to let loose. Appreciate that. And so this is uh, the next to the last message on the Dream Again series. Today I'm going to talk about expectation. Now we usually get what we expect in life. And if you expect nothing, then you won't be disappointed. You'll get nothing. And so expectancy in the spirit realm is like pregnancy in the natural, in the natural realm. So uh, when a woman is pregnant, and so in the same way, God's word is called a seed. And it's able to enter our mind, to enter our spirit, and cause us to get pregnant spiritually. Pregnant with what? Pregnant with the promises of God. And so the seed of God's word is able to produce whatever God promises in our life. There's a lot of promises in the Bible, promises about every area of life, from your finances to healing to the salvation of your family, the peace of mind. Uh, divine protection, anything that you need, there's a promise in the Bible that guarantees that to you. But it doesn't happen automatically. It's something that you have to claim, you have to believe, but even more than that, you have to expect it. And so you have to grow in your expectation to receive the promise of God. Amen. And so, uh, and so God has given us great and precious promises that we might partake of the divine nature. And, uh, you know, a pregnant woman, she conceives and then she grows larger every week until she gives birth. In the same way, your expectancy has to grow. And when you receive the promise of the Word of God, you have to water that seed and let it grow in you until you give birth to the promise of God. Amen? And so it has to, to grow in you. You can't just receive it, believe it, and then let it sit. But God wants you to grow in your expectancy. Praise God. And so some folks say, well, if something is the will of God, then it's just going to happen automatically. But that's not true. We, we play a part in receiving that promise, and we must expect it if it's going to happen. Because not everything that happens in the world is the will of God. Have you noticed that? Because God's will is everybody be saved. God's will is that everybody be healed, that there be peace and no crime and and uh, everybody loved one another. But that's not the case on the earth because uh, the Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. And his kingdom rules the world except for those who have entered into the kingdom of God. And the Bible says God has brought us out of the kingdom of yeah. darkness into the kingdom yeah. of light. So we're in another kingdom now and Satan can't dominate us. And if we won't let him, we can be free of his kingdom and the things that he would put in our life. Uh, Jeremiah 29 11 is a familiar scripture. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And so God is going to give you an expected end. And, and so uh, God makes good thoughts toward us. And He lets us know He thinks good thoughts toward us. He wants good things for our life. He has a good plan yeah. for our life. Amen. And the devil's greatest deception is that God doesn't have a good plan for your life. 
And if you serve God, you're going to live a boring life. You're going to be a loser. Everybody else will be out having fun. And you'll be in church. And you'll be sitting at home. <laughs> and you won't be able to have any fun. Now, I know the devil tells young people that because I believed that when I was a young person. And, you know, we were in church at least three times a week, sometimes every night. And I thought, man, the people out there are having so much fun, but i got to go to church. Yeah. And sometimes I would say, man, why did I have to be born into a pastor's family? Because all we do is go to church and eat. You know, that was like the only two things you could do. But you could play some sports and play football and watch football. But, but I, you know, I think, all we, you know, all we can do is go to church. And I believe the lie of the devil that, you know, it's so much fun in the world. And there is pleasure in sin. It says for a season until it bites you. Then it's not fun anymore. And, uh, and so some of us have learned that lesson. But God has a good plan for you. Not only that, God will change your desires. The Bible says he'll give you the will to do his will. He'll change your desires. Come on, I used to drink, smoke, party, and do all those things. Now all I do is drink coffee and read on the internet, watch TV, read the Bible and pray, and go to church. That's what I want to do. Amen? I don't want to do all that stuff that I used to do. I'm glad I'm not riding around smoking a joint and, and uh, drunk and always looking for a party and, you know, always seeking something that I can't find. And, and I'm glad that I'm satisfied in my relationship with God. Amen? And so God is going to bring you to the place that you'll like boring. Or what? Or what? Or what some people call boring. But God tells us he's got a good plan. He's got good promises for us. He's got good things to bring us to an expected end. In other words, your end will be what you expect. And God tells us he wants good things for us. So we will expect good things. Amen. We will expect the promises of God to come to pass in our life. And we'll expect great things to happen, happen to us. We won't think, oh, you know, I've got to serve God, and, and I'm not going to have any fun, I'm not going to have any money, and, and uh, I'm going to have to go to church all the time, and, you know, and blah, blah, blah. That's, you know, that's not God's plan for you. But God's plan for you is better than any plan that you have for yourself or anything that you would want for yourself. Amen? And so God wants to prosper you. That doesn't mean that... It'll, it will automatically happen. You have to expect it. Come on, God wants you to have health. Doesn't mean it's going to automatically happen. You have to expect it. Amen. God will protect you, but you have to expect it. Proverbs 23, 18 says, For surely there's an end, and your expectation will not be cut off. So whether your expectation is good or bad, it won't be cut off. It's going to happen. And so there's an end, and whatever you expect will be the end, or your, your end will be determined by your expectation. And so you can look at your life today, and look at your expectation, and what you have in life is exactly what you have expected, or what you have planned, or what you thought you were worth. Amen? And so sometimes people don't ask God for any more because they don't believe that they deserve any more. But the truth is that we don't really deserve anything except hell. We were born into sin. Come on, but God forgave us. He gives us good things, not because we're good, but because He's good. So it's not because we're deserving. It's because our daddy is rich. Amen? And He's good. And He wants good things for His children. But the things that happen to us are a reflection of our expectation what we expected in life. Fear is an expectation. It's expecting the worst to happen. Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith is believing in the promises of God. Fear is believing that the worst will happen. And then worry is meditating on fear. Yeah. Come on, it's, you know, meditating on the Word of God to get the promises of God and meditate on those things. But, uh, but worry is just the opposite, opposite of that. It's meditating that the promise of God is not going to come to pass. That the worst is going to happen. 
And worry is, is different things to different people. Worry is seeing your accountant counting on his fingers. <laughs> worry is being around town and seeing your doctor smoking a cigarette. Okay. Worry is taking a trip to Krispy Kreme Donut and seeing your fitness instructor in there. <laughs> uh, or your nutritionist. It's different things to different people. And I heard a story about a, a business owner of a small business. He wanted to hire somebody to worry for him because he worried so much. And so a young graduate came in, applied for the job, and, and, uh, and so the business owner said, listen, I worry so much, it's really dragging me down. I want to hire somebody to worry for me. And so uh, the, uh, the applicant said, well, how much does it pay? He said $100,000 a year. And, and so the applicant said, well, how can a small business like this afford to pay somebody $100,000 a year to worry? And the owner said, that's your first word. <laughs> and, uh, and so you can worry about a lot of things. Worry is just meditating on what the devil said, really, yeah. is what it is. Meditating on the lies of the devil. Meditating on some type of, of problem instead of the promise of God. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And if you don't have peace, then you can be sure that your mind is not stayed on God and not stayed on his promises. And so whenever we have, when we don't have peace and whenever we have fear and we have worry, we have to intentionally set our mind upon God. How big he is, how good he is, how powerful he is, how much he loves us, all the things that he wants to do in our life. And we have to switch what we're thinking and begin to think about him. Because if you think about God, you're going to be in perfect peace. Come on, because God is a God of peace. He's able to do everything. He never gets upset. Come on, He never gets worried. And uh, when we think about Him, and, and then we will have peace in our mind. And so, if we want the peace of God, we have to think about the God of peace. And if we choose to fix our mind on God, then God will fix your mind. I mean, you know, God can fix your mind. And people do a lot of things to try to fix their mind. They go to counseling. They take drugs. They do a lot of things so to try to fix their mind. But if you fix your mind on the promises of God, it will fix your mind. Because you can't think about Him and His goodness and His greatness and His ability and all the things that He wants to do for you and still be in fear, still be in worry, still be in stress. Amen. And so for most people, their past experiences shape their future expectation. Yeah. And when you have failures in life, then you begin to expect failure. Yeah. And you think that the future will always be like the past. Yeah. You know, when you look at football teams, and some, some of them are winning teams, have a winning tradition. Some are losing teams, and they never win. And the reason why is because of expectation. You know, and, and uh, it's hard to, to, uh, to change a losing team and change their mentality. But even in Texas, you know, you can look at some communities uh, and notice that they've had winning teams for decades. Yeah. You know, and I follow some of them like, like El Campo. I mean, they were good in the 60s and they're still good today. Still going in the playoffs. And I mean, that's one town that I've noticed. And there's, there's different towns that it really doesn't matter who the coach is and what decade it is, they're still going to the playoffs and they're gonna they're gonna be competing. Or Quero, that's another example. We played them in high school in the playoffs and and they were good back in the 70s. They're still good today. Still going to the playoffs, still going to state today. And it's because of their expectation. They have a winning tradition or a winning expectation. But when teams lose they get a losing expectation. Yeah. And you think of the poor Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Oh, nobody's a Browns fan in here. <laughs> I think they were 0-16 last year. But this year they have the first pick in the draft and the fourth pick in the draft. Wow. And I'm just wondering how they're going to mess that up. I don't know. You can bet that their career's over. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's, it's like the graveyard of quarterbacks. And it's not just one, you could probably name 10 that went there and, uh, and their career's over after Cleveland. And uh, it's because of, 
a losing expectation that they've had for many, many decades. And so you can either get your expectation from your past and what's happened to you, or you can get your expectation from God's Word. That's good. Come on, you can choose. You get your expectation from your family and what happened to them, or you can get your expectation from the Word of God. You know, if you go to the doctor and you fill out an application, medical history, they want to know all your family's diseases. And, uh, and they say, you know, if, you're, if your parents had this or they had that, then you're, you know, that's going to happen to you too. And, uh, and so I like Brother Jesse that's going to be here on the 29th. And, and so he talks about in his family, the men died of heart attacks at an early age. But he's turned that around. Jesse's 60 something. I don't know exactly. But, uh, but he's in good health. He said he changed that. He believed something different for himself than what had happened in past history. And so God broke him out of that rut. Come on, and out of that curse and gave him a new expectation. Come on, you don't have to be limited by your past and the things that have happened to you. And so when we get God's word, we get the promises of God's word, we can change our expectation and begin to expect something better. Amen? Amen. Begin to expect the promises of God to come true in our life. And, and so there's, there's ways to change your expectation. One of them is by hearing the word of God. And whenever you hear the word of God, then faith comes. Yeah. But it's not just hearing it one time. It means a continual hearing of the word of God. Because you've got to have faith every day. Yeah. Come on, you've got to have faith whenever you face a problem. You've got to get back in the word and build up your faith and see what the Bible says. Some of you are being encouraged this morning because you're hearing the word of God. And faith comes to your heart. And it gives you the power and the strength to be able to overcome. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. But then also another powerful key is meditating on the Word of God. When you meditate on the Word of God, it changes your expectation. Yeah. Amen. So Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So we'll become what we think about or the core of our thoughts. And when it says meditate on the word of God, it doesn't mean a couple of times. It doesn't mean three or four times. But it means a continual meditating on the promises of God and upon the word of God. The Bible talks about the blessed man who's planted by a tree of, of living waters. He's a picture of stability in good times and bad times. And, and problems and trouble come to everybody's life, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. Come on, the storm came to the wise man and came to the foolish man. But the wise man was built on the rock. He withstood the storm. And the man who's planted by rivers of living water, drought comes his way, problems come his way, but he's tapped into a supernatural source of the Word of God. Word of God's backed up by God Himself. He's tapped into something that will sustain Him. And the Word of God will sustain you in tough times. In bad times, you can't just be hooked on a feeling because sometimes you feel good and sometimes you feel bad. Amen. And sometimes it looks good and sometimes it looks bad. But you're not moved by feelings, but you're moved by the promises of God. And when you face trouble, in the midst of trouble, you get the promise out and say, I believe this. Come on, you confess the promise and you meditate on it in the midst of trouble and it brings you through the situation until you're able to receive physically what God has promised to you. Amen. And so renewing our mind is a, it's a continual thing, a continual process. And uh, it says renew your mind so you can receive the perfect will of God. What is the will of God or the perfect will of God? Well, Jesus said it in the Lord's Prayer. God's will is that uh, the kingdom of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is that earth be like heaven. Come on, and it was in the Garden of Eden. It was a perfect, you know, before they sinned and, and Satan came in and man uh, sold out his dominion and authority to the devil. And, and now the Bible says the devil is a God of this world. That he's blinded the eyes of people who don't 
see the light and see Christ. And, and so, but the will of God is that earth be like heaven yeah. and there's no sickness in heaven. No. Come on, there's nobody's broke in heaven. Right. Nobody's sad in heaven. <laughs> nobody's depressed in heaven. Come on, that's the will of God for you. Yes. So that, that earth be like heaven. Yes. Amen? Yes. That's what God's will is for you. And so we have to meditate on the word of God to be able to receive that promise. Amen? And be able to in, in get our expectation right so we're expecting the promise of God. And so 1 Peter 1.13 says, Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end. And so it's an interesting scripture because it's talking about loins, and we know the loins are the reproductive part of the body. But what it's saying is that your mind has reproductive power. Come on, your mind has power to give birth. And so you say, where is that power? That power is in your mind or in your imagination. The word hope means to expect. The word mind means imagination. It says, gird up your imagination so that you're able to expect the right things. Amen? And so you know that your imagination can run wild. Come on, if something bad happens, you hear a bad report, your imagination can, can run wild and, you know, cause fear and worry and all those types of things. But it says, gird up your imagination, put it on the right track so that you can expect the will of God. So you have to do something with your mind. And when folks get born again, their spirit is saved, but their mind is still unrenewed. Yeah. And it's got to be trained, it's got to be processed with the Word of God. And so you have to take the promise of God and see yourself possessing it. Yeah. You do that with your imagination, just like you would imagine anything else. You see yourself possessing the Word of God. you got to see yourself saved, amen? Living in, living in spiritual victory. You've got to see yourself living in victory. You've got to see yourself walking in love. Come on, you've got to see yourself healed. Come on, don't just see yourself being the way that you've always been, or, you know, in a negative way, but see yourself possessing the will of God. See yourself as having a financial abundance, that you're able to have enough for yourself and able to be a giver. And so the Apostle Paul said, we don't look at things that are seen, but we look at things that are not seen. How can you look at something that you can't see with your physical eye? You can see it with your imagination. Come on, your mind can see things that are unseen. Amen? And you're able to picture things that are unseen. And so we don't look at things that are seen Come on, things that, that, that are circumstances, and, and many times that it could be negative circumstances, we don't look at those things, but we take our mind and we imagine and look at the Word of God, what God has promised us. Praise God. And so you can see yourself, you can see yourself as being prosperous. You can see yourself as having everything that God's Word says that you can have. I'm not talking about imagining something that God had promised. I'm talking about imagining the things that God has promised to you. Yes. And you can take those promises, make them personal in your life, and see yourself as possessing them before you ever possess them. Right. You know, Dr. Cho uh, wrote a book, and he pastored the church of a million people in Korea. And so in the book he wrote, you know, he started out with just a few people. And he said whenever he was preaching... He would see himself, imagine himself preaching to thousands of people, yeah. even though there was just a handful of people there. Well, eventually the church grew. You know, back in the 70s, it was 50,000 or 80,000, which was the biggest church in the world. And everybody thought, well, it'll probably never get bigger than that. But then it went all the way up to a million people. But he said he began to imagine the promises of God being true, a reality in his life even when it did not look like it. He chose to look at the promise of God. It's like when, when, God, when Abraham was childless, God took him out and he showed him the stars. He said, see those stars. He said, your, your descendants, your seed will be like the stars. The stars are uncountable. 
In other words, he gave Abraham a picture of what his descendants would be. And every time Abraham thought about a situation, he saw the stars. And God changed his name from Abram to Abraham. So he went around introducing himself as Abraham, which means the father of many children. And I'm sure when he introduced himself as Abraham, people would say, well, how many kids you got? He said, don't be a smart aleck. And, uh, and so, so he went around introducing himself as the father of many children when he was childless. Can you imagine that? But he began to see the promise of God coming true in his life, the promise of God being a reality in his life. Praise God. Paul prayed for the Ephesian church that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they would know the hope of their calling. The eyes of your understanding mean the eyes of your mind. What are the eyes of your mind? The eyes of your mind are your imagination. Amen? He prayed that they would be able to see the hope of their calling. Can you see the hope of your calling? The calling that God has for you. Can you see above your current situation and your current limitations and all the things that you don't think you can do or somebody else said you can't do? All the, the lies the devil would bring against you. Can you see past that and see the calling that God has upon your life? The Bible says he's able to do more than we can ask or think. Yeah. He can even do more than we can expect. Yeah. But we have to expect great things yeah. and expect for him to do great things in our life. Yeah. Praise God. And so God wants to break us out of our box, break us out of our circumstances, in our surroundings, but before he can do that, we have to believe that he can, and not only believe that he can, but begin to see it in the spirit, see it in our imagination. Come on, the Bible says that uh, that the Holy Spirit ministers or will cause us to have dreams and visions. Of course, a dream is your imagination at night when you're dreaming, but, there, but a vision is seeing something with your imagination during the day when you're awake. Come on, God will show you something when you're awake. I've had it happen to me several times. What did, how did God speak? He gave me a picture of something or something he wanted me to do. And so it came through my mind or came through my imagination. Praise God. And so there's a story in the book of Acts about Peter and John who are going down to the temple to pray. And as they're going into the temple, there is a lame man. The Bible says he'd been crippled from birth. He's sitting there. And he's begging for money. And so he's expecting to receive some money from them. But they have something much better than money to give him. Praise God. And so uh, you usually get what you expect. And faith is designed to increase our expectations. But this man had been crippled from birth. And so he wasn't expecting anything more than just getting a little bit of change. Just surviving. Just surviving from day to day. And so some, that happens to some people in life. They've been hurt, wounded, or crippled in life. And so they don't expect any more than just to get by. And so they never reach out and try for more, ask for more. And they're just, you know, uh, living according to their limitations. And some folks would rather stay where they are than to risk failure or risk disappointment. But, you know, you have to break out of your pattern and your habit and the limitations that you put upon yourself. And people are, are people of habits. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> that people tend to, uh, to establish habits, and that's another sermon, a good sermon, but your habits determine the totality of your life. But, but people establish habits, and so they get kind of stuck in those habits. Yeah. And when some of you eat the same thing for breakfast every morning, same thing you've ate for the last 30 years. Bacon and eggs. You need to change it up and have a taco a couple times a week or something. Yeah. And, and do something different. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. but everything's always the same. You drink the same brand of coffee you've been drinking for, for 30 years. And, and uh, doing the same things. And so you're a person of habit. If somebody wanted to kill you, it'd be real easy for you. They would know exactly where to find you. You go down the same aisles at HEB. I mean, it's always the same. It wouldn't be hard for them to catch you or find you. 
And some of you, you know, even though there's thousands of recipes out there, you have ground beef patties for dinner every night. <laughs> Always the same thing. But you call it by a different day so that you can fool people. One night, and they say, what's for dinner? One night you say it's country steak. You know, and you have some gravy with it. And then the next night it's Italian steak. And you have tomato sauce with it. And uh, the next night it's Japanese steak. And you have some teriyaki sauce with it. Come on, and then the next night it's Salisbury steak with some Worcestershire sauce or something like that. No, a guy told me that he was uh, getting stay in a nursing home for rehabilitation and, and they had ground beef patties for dinner every night, but it was always a different name. You know, they thought they were fooling the old people. <laughs> so, said, man, we're having so many dishes here. But uh, this man had been laying from birth. It's all he had ever known. Come on, they, they picked him up every day and they carried him and they set him down. He always ended up at the same place every day. And some people do that in life. No matter what they do and how many, you know, they go in circles for years, they always end up at the same place. Have you ever been trying to, to find an address in a, in a strange neighborhood and you drive around and around and you're back in the same place? I've done that a few times in my life. But some people do that in life. And when they go around in circles, they end up in the same place. And when they do that in their career, they end up in the same place. Because they never expect more. Yeah. Come on, if all you've ever known is poverty, then that's what you expect. If all you've ever known is, is uh, sickness, then that's what you expect. If all you've ever been raised in or seen is bad marriages, that's what you expect for yourself. Maybe you choose a mate. They say who is like your parents. And uh, so people tend to choose a mate who is, who is like the parents. I guess I'm a lot like your dad, huh? I think I'm a little nicer than him, but uh, anyway. But people choo they'll choose a mate who will help them live up to their expectations. Because they don't expect anymore. Come on, it happens spiritually too. People don't expect anymore. Maybe they struggle, they've never been able to get over the barriers, so they just really never expect anything. And so they'll build their routine around their disability, or their dysfunction. And so they're like this man who just, you know, his routine, daily routine was to go to the same place, and it was built around his disability. He never expected anything to ever change. But God wants to break you out of that routine. He wants to break you out of that pattern. Come on, you don't have to be like your parents. If it was, they had a disappointing life, you don't have to be like them. God can break you out of that routine. Come on, you don't have to live in poverty. You don't have to live in sickness. You don't have to, to you know, live in dysfunct marriage dysfunction and all those things. But God can break you out of that routine. And so, this man had always been in the same place, but Peter said, silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, give I to thee in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He took his hand, he rose him up, the Bible says that his legs were healed. He went walking, leaping, and praising God. Come on, in one moment, in one miracle, his life was totally changed. God had something better for him than just a few coins. God had wholeness, healing, health. Something he'd never dreamed of before. And the same thing is true. God wants to break you out of your expectations that you have. Because some of, your, some of you, your expectations are way too low. Come on. Some of you expect absolutely the worst. And so, and you get that in life. But others of you, your, your expectations are too low to be able to receive what God wants for you. Come on. You have to raise your expectations. I know this message is for some folks who are here today, but God's telling you to expect more. Believe Him for more. Raise your expectations. Your life doesn't have to be limited by what you've seen in the past. Come on, your life can live up to everything that God has promised you. Praise God. If you're here today and you say, I want to break out of that pattern, break out of, out of the past and expectations, I want you to stand up this morning. 
And you say, I'm going to break out. Come on. Some of you, maybe you just feel like, you know, you're looking at a mountain. You're looking at a wall. And you don't know how you're going to get past it. Come on, you don't know how you're going to move anymore. There are obstacles and, and limitations and things that you can't see yourself breaking out of. But I believe God's going to begin breaking you out of it today as you change your expectations and get some of the promises of God's Word and claim those for yourself. Begin to see yourself possessing those things. Amen. Because God's got bigger things and greater things for you than you could even imagine. So I'm just going to pray today. Too many folks to lay hands on today. But Father, we just thank you right now that you're changing their minds. You're changing their expectations. We release greater expectations over them. Father, we release the power of the promise of God's word over them. That they're not stuck. They're not limited. They're not held back by the past or by failure or anything that's happened to them. But Father, we release the promise of God that they're breaking out of the past. Breaking out of the problems, breaking out of the lies of the enemy, Father. And we thank you right now that they're seeing more. They're going to possess more. They're going to see themselves different and see themselves have greater things and bigger things and better things. We praise you for it. Let's just sing a little worship song.